may buntag, may mudo, may hapon ka na itong tanan. I am Heidi Lindy Baloro, a BL third year student of North Shatton Campus. Now, we will be talking about the philosophical thoughts and education of these two philosophers. And here is our learning objective. K. Define the philosophical perspective of John Locke, the empiricist educator, and Herbert Spencer, the utilitarian educator in education. S. Create a table summarizing the educational thoughts of both philosophers, highlighting their application in real-world classroom scenarios. A. Reflect on the importance of Lux and Spencer's philosophical perspectives in shaping contemporary educational practices. But first, we will define what is philosophy and philosophy of education. So philosophy comes from the Greek root words, fellow means love and sophos means wisdom, or the love of wisdom. When someone studies philosophy, they want to understand how and why people do certain things and how to live a good life. In short, philosophers want to know the meaning of life. And that's what philosophy means. Philosophy of education is the branch of applied or practical philosophy concerned with the nature and aims of education and the philosophical problems arising from educational theory and practices. First is John Locke. John Locke was an English philosopher and physician and one of the most prominent Enlightenment thinkers. He was the father of liberalism and his theory, the Black State, or the Tabu La Raza. John Locke, from 1632 to 1704, the empiricist educator. So from the word empiricist or empiricism, it is the knowledge of the world based on empirical observation or based on one's experiences. According to John Locke, learners can acquire knowledge about the world through the senses, such as sense of sight, smell, taste, hearing, and touch. Empirical perspective emphasizes that ideas are not native to the mind, but come from our interactions and experiences with the world around us. So we can only acquire knowledge through interacting others, through learning by doing, and with the experiences or observation that we have. His most famous and influential work in 1690 and is a concerning human understanding, which is the tabula rasa, a, Latin, a Latinization of the phrase black slate. So black slate, from the book of Locke's phrase, it comes from the phrase white paper. Locke believes that a child that a child was born without understanding nothing, without any understanding inside of us, like a blank sheet of paper or a piece of paper that has not been written on it yet. But we can only reason it out based on what happens to us and what we learn through our observation and experiences. For an example, a fish. So a child will think, what does a fish look like? How does a fish swim? Or where can I find a fish? So if the child step out outside of the houses of their house and interact with the environment, then he or she can find that fish can swim, that fish is an animal, that fish lives in the ponds, waters, lakes, and any other places. So we can conclude or we can jump into the conclusion that the fish has their own environment also. And that is what reflections come comes in. in his book some thoughts concerning education he wrote that education began in an early childhood where parents and adults as a great role model to their child he also views that the children's life could be simple emphasizing sound mind strong and healthy body diet and safe learning environment where children should take breath of fresh air have sufficient sleep eat healthy foods and simple food bath regularly exercise frequently and have time for recreation and play 
He also emphasizes that learning should be in a gradual process of instruction in three R's, such as reading, writing, and arithmetic should be in slow and clear. So simple ideas become more complex through comparison, reflection, and generalization. That is the inductive method, wherein from specific to the generalization. Unlock also questioned the long traditional view that knowledge came exclusively from literary sources, particularly the Greek and the Latin classics. But he believed that it does not only from those sources, but he believes that learners learn from authentic experiences and they are active agents of their own learning. Where a child or a learner are responsible for their own learning through interactive and observation. He also opposed the divine right of kings, where for an instant, if the father is a politician, a child will automatically or the son will automatically become a politician. But no, because for him, political order should be based upon a contract between the people and the government. And aristocrats are not designed to be are not designed by birth to be a ruler. People were to establish their own government and select their own political leaders. That is why civic education should be emphasized. Where? Because, because everyone needs to be educated so that, so that, or para pamunuan ang kanilang sarili at ang kanilang bayan. That is what John Locke believes. Herbert Spencer. So, let's first discover who is Herbert Spencer. So Herbert Spencer was a British philosopher, a sociologist, an anthropologist, and utilitarian zen. He was he had the concept of survival of the fittest. Kung sino ang inaape ay inaape sa mga maaape dahil sila ay mahini. So that is what survival of the fittest. So let's move on and his contribution to the education. First, he had the concept of survival of the fittest, what I said earlier. So from the word, simple as fit and survive. So kung sino yung nakaka-survive or kung sino yung fit in the society or in the environment, or those people who can adopt in the environment will only survive. That is what, in simple terms, a survival of the fittest means. But for Herbert Spencer, it means that human development had gone through an evolutionary series of stages. So, this, quoted this from the Darwinism theory, where in foreign instance, in an evolutionary series, before a dinosaur, an elephant, or any animal or species lived, are strong, um, they can adopt the environment before. But now they become an extinct. Why? Because they cannot adopt the surroundings or the environment now. But people do because they are flexible enough and they can adopt the environment. A second, industrialized society requires vocational and professional education based on scientific and practical or utilitarian objective rather than the very general education. So Spencer. Spencer favors on specialized education rather than of general education. Why? Because this is one of the demand. For instance, in the K-12 reforms or the K-12 education program, where the te technical vocational livelihood as a strand will help to prepare students, will help to prepare the students to work to earn a living in the industrialized society such as the ICT strand where students enhances their basic computer skills to become or to adopt the transformation of the society. The curriculum should emphasize the practical, utilitarian, and scientific subjects that help humankind master the environment and was not included included the root learning. Schooling must be related to life and to the activities needed to earn a living. That is what I have explained earlier. That the practicality and the application in their real life. That is what utilitarian. Because a utilitarianism philosophy um, aims to educate students to be a useful individuals in the society. 
that they can adopt and be flexible enough on what will happen in the society or in that YouTube environment they live. The truth about curriculum should be practical and scientific subject where it emphasizes that subjects that from direct relevance to daily life such as teaching practical skills. What I said earlier, the problem solving skills, the communication skills, and the computer skills, which is relevant into the daily lives, and so that they can be living after. Lastly, individual competition leads to social progress. He, he who is fittest survives according to Ornstein 1989. So individual competition. Competition leads to progress. So Spencer believed that competi competition was to motivate students to learn and to progress on their own learning. Why? While on the other hand, competition well on the other hand, competition is not encouraged in other philosophers. But for Herbert Spencer, competition um, leads to social progress. Why? Because before in the old curriculum, old curriculum, there are first, second, and third honors. So that emphasizes the competition within a class, but it's not a bad idea because the child has their own learning, has their own progress of learning because they are motivated to learn. Yan ang sinasabi ni Lana. Kung mag-aaral ng mag-aaral ang estudyante, makakuha siya or makaka-adapt siya at maging malinaw sa kanya ang impormasyon na ipapahayag ng sango. And that he can be flexible or he can adopt the changes of the environment that he lives, that he is trying to do. To end it up, I want to summarize the philosophy of education or their thoughts of education. So John Locke, John Locke said that education is not acquisition of knowledge contained only on the great books. Great books. It is learning, interacting with concrete experience, comparing and reflecting. Thus, the learners as an active agent, but not a passive agent of his own learning. On the other hand, Herbert Spencer believes that the expert who concentrates on a limited field is useful, but if he loses sight of the interdependence of things, he becomes a man who knows more and more about less and less. Since we are done, we will be having an activity for everyone. The instruction is to develop a visually appealing table summarizing the educational thoughts of Locke and Spencer. Include columns for key principles, applications in the classroom, and real-world example, illustrating this application in shaping the contemporary practices in education. That would be all, and thank you for watching this video. For more videos, please like, subscribe, and share.